Hi everybody. So, these things, wind turbines, they are popping up everywhere from small installations like this to much larger installations running wind farms and they are more or less all of the same design. Because they're all one design, what you might think immediately is, well, that's because it's the best design. But this idea of the best design as an argument not to change design is pretty spurious. After all, remember at one time, pretty much all aeroplanes were built the same way. They were all propeller driven. Truth is, of course, there is no best as an absolute. It's just the best we can do at the time. And thankfully, we didn't listen to those people who said, no, that's the best, don't bother. Otherwise, we would have missed out on the wonderful engineering that is the jet engine. So simply being universal is not an argument for that's the best. It's just the best we can do at the time. And it is certainly not a reason for not exploring further. Exploring further is how we get better than the best. Because we found that out when we developed this. We took a rotor and stuck another rotor behind it and it gave, well, a very impressive performance, a higher performance increase than just putting six blades on a single rotor. This spacing of the rotor really matters. It's a quarter of the diameter between the two hubs and that gave us a massive improvement. Now, of course, whenever you solve one engineering problem, you always generate another. And unfortunately, of course, this is still a load of rotating razor blades. Now, I don't know if you remember this. We found this as a child's toy in our local supermarket and put it on a floating bearing. And oddly enough, it behaved really, really beautifully. So I drew this up in Tinkercad and it turns out there's only three parts. Now, with this bit, which is the rotor, you need two of those. So, of course, I've printed off two of them. And then we have the stator, which is that bit. And then there's a little cap, that bit. And that's all there is to it. Now, in the stator, I've put a serpentine coil, of course, and the cap glues onto the stator. And in the rotors, what I've done is I've put some magnets. There are 18 of them, two millimeter by one centimeter, near Dimian magnets arranged north, south, north, south, north, south. And there are two of those that will go together and link together like that. So we have in fact created an axial flux generator because these two go here and here. And then we have that magnetic field passing between them. Now, if you think about that, all we've actually done is exactly what we did here. But instead of having the blades, we've bent the blades back into this ball shape to prevent the rotating sides that is this. And this ball shape will be able to, or should be able to capture the wind from any, any direction. So having put the magnets in and the coil in, I need to glue on the cap. And then in the center there, you can see some ball bearings. They are uh, four millimeters by six millimeters internal diameter and 12 millimeters external diameter. And there's one at the back and one at the front. Then I'll put a bit of six millimeter bar in there and put those two rotors on that bar. That's it together, surprisingly simple. Okay, let's have a quick look at what this can do. And for that, I've got a hairdryer. We're just gonna point the hairdryer in different directions. That's a pretty good result. Now then, when you looked at that first one, the swirl went in the same direction. So when we had the wind coming from this side, it would rotate in one direction. When the wind came from this side, it would slow down, stop, and rotate in the other direction, which was a bit irritating. So what I've done is I've mirrored this one, and you can see that the swirls are now against each other. So this one swirls that way, that one swirls that way. So if I now put a wind on it, let's see what happens. <laughs> so 
So there we go, an omnidirectional ball turbine that was actually really easy to make. Now, anybody who wants the files, both the original and the mirror version, then the link is in the description below. If you can find the original ball that this was um, based on, of course, you don't need the STL files at all. Just get one of those balls and cut it in half. But this will have its own benefits and its own detriments. I mean, it's omnidirectional. Uh, it's compact. You're going to have a problem chopping up birds and bats unless you poke them right in there. So it's going to be safer for wildlife. And it will have its detriments. I mean, it's smaller, so it's not going to generate as much energy as the razor blades right here. But then Everything's like that. It's the reason that propeller-driven aeroplanes didn't disappear at the arrival of the jet engine. Things find their place, and really, it's about experimentation and fitting what it is that you want to the environment that you have to achieve the results that you want within acceptable limits of the nature of the thing that it is you're building. So keep on experimenting, people. Keep me in touch with what you're doing. I found this pretty interesting. You will be seeing this again, incidentally. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.